you so much for coming out today to our Reader's Bookstore and Cafe. We're very, very honored and excited to have Charles Plenel here with us today. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him as quickly as possible. Uh, I just want to mention uh, really quickly as well that um, uh, I hope you enjoy yourself today. Thank you for coming. This is a Friends of the Library bookstore and cafe, so everything you see here has been donated, for those of you who don't know. So and everything you purchase today benefits the library. Um, we also have wonderful programs down here, and uh, this is one of them. We're um, delighted, and I know this is a rare occurrence, so we're very honored to have uh, Charles Pennell with us today. Um, just to let you know as well, um, we have a number of his titles here um, for sale, um, if you're interested. Um, We've got a hand on the doorknob um, in a hard cover that's going to be $20 as well as Last of the Moccasins for $20 and Charles is going to be here to sign everything. We have a number of other selected titles um, including Some Mother's Son and another copy of Not Thy Mind. Um, those are going to be $10 as well. So please feel free and, uh, and we've got another last minute and a signed broadside as well. It looks beautiful. So. He's got posters. And posters. And so there are just a number of goodies up here. So everything's up for bed apparently. So this is exciting. Um, and it looks as though we have a lot of friends and uh, uh, admirers in the room. But I'll just go ahead and... Um, announce graciously again. Um, thank you for coming, Charles. Um, Charles Pinell, as you all know, is uh, one of the great figures of North American literary underground. Um, he's howled um, out of the Kansas plains um, with the likes of Michael McClure, Bruce Connor, Bob Randman, S. Clay Wilson, and various others. Um, and S. Clay Wilson is in the crowd today, so we're very excited about that. Yeah. Although he doesn't want me to announce that. Um, Sorry. He's also roomed with Neil Cassidy. He's not in the crowd. Forget I said that. Neil Cassidy, Ginsburg, Dylan. Um, he's also printed the first zap for Robert Crumb. So um, we're very, very honored and delighted to have Charles Plymouth with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. And now to get through this. Oh. And where to start? <laughs> this is, uh, as many of you know, this is my spiritual home, second spiritual home. And I was glad to uh, arrive in, in the city. And traveling is hell, and I don't recommend it for anyone. But like all, like all places, thank you. Once you get inside the zone, the city, you're okay. San Francisco, Manhattan, whatever. It's just getting there. But I did recognize a landmark of sorts that's around the corner from my friend Glenn Todd who is hosting me my thanks to him and my thanks to especially to A.D. Winans for putting all this together yeah. Yeah. and the uh, Reader's Bookstore for having me and friends of the library, and Dave Bowles, who is here, yeah. and yeah. Uh, helping put all of this together. So, this is uh, quite something. I have friends all over. I, I went by uh, around the corner from Glenn's house last night, and we saw where Mammy Pleasant planted the great eucalyptus trees. And I had written a poem about that earlier in my life. And we went down to uh, Polk Street and had dinner. We used to call it Polk Gulch. Uh, their hotel Wentley, John Wheaters, and Foster Fudds, where I have talked with Ginsburg and Leary over serious, they talked over serious matters. Um, I, I have, uh, I like to be elegant. I'm trying to compete with McClure, but otherwise, 
Otherwise, I'm uh, I'm traveling mainly uh, with the help of my friends. Shades of San Francisco. Polk Gulch cowboys roam rough trade streets in juke patrol under high plateaus where witchy eucalyptus trees hold dark secrets like starry-eyed pachucos dreaming in the fog. Two trees, three, four, where Mammy Pleasant picked the brains from her banker husband. It's now the Green Eye Hospital, where ebony streetwalkers in black leather and cheap moonlight bathe their wounds as sweet as Nubian princesses languishing under the street lamp fur of neon. Spells of laughter. And want a date, mister? In dress of green, they speak of the fallen woman, but oh, the fallen man. Tilted thighs and abrupt nipples, there in that old pad to be torn down. A bed of curtains and suede coat therein. The long arms adorned with scars beneath bracelets of gold and foreheads with burn marks of sweet vanity of youth. Smell of hickory smoke deep into the night. Lonely fashion ads torn and crumpled in leaves among the wine bottles of lust. My sister burns in that Chinese lantern of the western moon. In that same area, uh, 1963, as many of you know, lived on Gough Street with uh, Ginsburg and Cassidy. And at the corner of Post Street and Golf, a Chinaman had a store once called the Golden West Market. The government plans to tear it down. They're crooks, he says. Where I find another place for a store? At 1403 Golf Street, there is a flat which has stored past lives and old baggage left by those who saw too far behind that pearly painted door. Neil now feverishly unloading old boxes of clothes, books, belts, tapes, carrying and across the threshold where in the fifties Levine painted Orlowski's Superman Man. Alan returns to Golf Street as saintly now as ever. Chaplin asks down the sidewalk and he brings some tapes of Ezra and I recall Eagle's eye, wrinkled in stone, sculptured old man, alone with his muse, clarity of light years, wrecked and focused glory of the unfit and unbroken. He's still alive, you say, 82. Then you run around the corner, your hair bouncing up and down, the pawnbroker of all unredeemed problems, as the worst of all possible worlds. And I recall your gentle ways when many lives were crossed upon and set in mind of thee. And the young burst forth untended, blazing trails in long limousine. Long-haired boys run past the house to the Avalon ballroom scene. Popping their eternity, they run past the door, their rock and roll boots more run over than before. Past the 52 MGTD classic, Billy Batman Yarmark just gave me. Reality came from comics so fast that Zap was coming soon. Like Jesus, oh Janice, and some rock and roll like you never heard. When the doors flung open in space, whirling, hey man, when you're way out there alone, doing an old hip-hop twist, reaching for the stars, big... Brother, Barber, Tall, Bob, Big Sir, the back door by the tumbling stairs where Neil returned years later, gone in the face, Glenn said. Elephants, when ready, go to a burial place. Where Sister Betty and Mulatto Frank from Deadwood, son of an Irish sheriff and black madam, 
slip off cold ripple nightmares chemical wine a slim thread of home to them all maggie's wash now flaps between the tree and dark lawn where cold clouds crash eclipse churn high above the jeweled ships where suburban Housewives, orange peels go insane among the coffee grounds and bones. Crawling to the doors, drag in for choppy sea and frog. Pick down those sails of unrest and throw a torch of amber to the ghosts. So, you know, a lot of my poems are tributes to people. Uh, this, we dropped down to Hollywood in 1968. This is for Dean Stockwell. In Hollywood, aged poodles recoil in fright. Ancient sorority queens chew juicy fruit in Topanga Canyon all night. Hitchhikers from eternity flag your Chevrolet and hug your blue jeans in Barney's Beanery where they've added another room to hell. The jukebox keeps repeating second-hand rows and in unison towards the sunset of Santa Monica Beach a thousand long fingers of high school sweethearts hold their cigarettes through wisps of smoke. There is a chance, second-hand rows, a star may fall at your feet. But you know, that chance withers your lips as you sing many versions of your love poem, torn alone in pages of the night's tarnished wings of the angel's flight, past Fontes all the way up Sunset Strip, as unlikely as Dante filling self-help programs. In heaven, the lights of Los Angeles endlessly hang like a hustler's mad beads. Cast this spell on neon dye tonight, dark moon, for tomorrow that ounce of stardust will be wiped from Cadillac chrome, unnoticed by freeway hawks.